You know what's funny, Appa fam, is I'll go to record like 25 billion TOTDs in one recording session and the pre-TOTD prayer session just has me on like just one subject. <laughs> or two or three, but not too many. Thumbnail time. What's up, Yappa fam, and welcome to today's TOTD. The journey is long, so take a breath. I don't know why it came to me like that, but Yappa fam, if you have answered the call of God in your life, if you lifted your hands and said, I and you really did that and the Holy Ghost came down and met you and he took you up on that offer and he gave you something to do to become then brother and sister the journey is gonna be a long journey so take some bread with you now even what do you mean by that long journey God already gave me the promise God gave it to me what is this long journey stuff you're talking about well I'm glad you ask now you got the word from God that you're gonna pastor that you're gonna be a preacher that you're going to be proclaiming the word of God on a massive level you're gonna be a missionary, you're going to be an apostle, you're going to do great things for the kingdom of God, whatever the Holy Ghost has told you, you're going to become. Trust me, there's going to be a process beforehand. Okay, so here's the thing. You get a word from God that you're called to do something, and most likely, it's not going to happen right away. How many times have you guys heard this? A preacher's preaching about a young man or young men who feel called to preach, called to pastor, called to do things like that. But it's just not the timing of the Holy Ghost. So what does a pastor tell him to do? He says, go go clean toilet son, go teach Bible studies, go do this and go do that. Why? Because it is not their timing. The journey is long. The preparation to get to wherever the Holy Ghost has called you to go, it takes time. It's not just going to fall down from heaven like that. We have to understand there is a season of waiting. A season where the word of God has already came to pass, but you're just getting to it coming to pass. Okay? Because when God speaks, God's eternal. It's just done in the future, well, more in our future, not God's future, because God's eternal, so he doesn't have a future. He is always, he is in the past, as he is in the present, as he is in the future, he's just everywhere. Real quick lesson on God. You can imagine a little winning string. Let's see if I find something. I'll use my phone charger. Yes, my friends, is time. This is how we see time. I'll see that. Okay, look. Follow my nose. This is us going through time. Okay, this works better. This is us going through time. God already did it right here. Can you see that? Right here, this spot right here, this is where the calling of God is taking place. This is your first message that you preach. This is the time that you go to that country to be a missionary. This is that right there. You're right here though, okay? God sees it like this, okay? Because he's everywhere. He sees it all at one time. So you're over here, and you're trying to get over there, and you're trying to have it like all at once. No, it doesn't work that way. What happens is there is this process of time. You guys like my sound effects? Bling. There's this process called time. And in that, God has all these conferences, all these messages, all these prayer meetings that you went to and God confirms his word and God shapes you and God molds you and God does all these different things to you, refines your spirit, creates you to be a different man. And all of a sudden, ding, 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 he does all this stuff and boom, now you're ready to preach. Now you're ready to go to the missions field. Now you're ready to start that company that gives millions of dollars to your local church. You're ready for it now. Let's put time away. Okay, so that is the waiting. And that's what we all have to be cognizant of, is that you're called of God, there's gonna be a process beforehand. So don't expect just because you got the word from God that it's gonna happen, boom, right there. Maybe two years, maybe five years, maybe 10 years before the word comes to pass, okay? So be aware of that. Let's take a look in at a bread. Now, here's the thing. Bread was like the staple number one food and almost is the staple number one food of any culture or country or anything Thing in the world. Bread, whether with yeast or without yeast, tortillas or flatbread or whatever, that gives you energy. Bread equals energy. Let's just keep it like that. So my friend, my brother, my sister, on your way to receiving the promise of God, you're going to need sustenance, something to sustain you until you get there. What is that thing that's going to sustain you until you get there? Glad you asked. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know what? that is? Ooh, God, that oof. Woo, here we go, guys. You know what that scripture means? The bread that you are to eat, that you are to consume, that is supposed to sustain you until you get to the end of your destination, that bread is the word of God. Mm, we're going to get deep now. Faith 
is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what happens is God gives you a little piece of bread and he knows that you need bread to get through to the other side of your journey. But instead of you just dropping it and running straight to the big deal, oh, I want to preach, oh, I want to be the missionary, oh, I want it so bad. Instead of that, you got to understand that God is consistently ooh, raining out bread from his mouth because he is God that is not subject to time. So that's what what we see when we see the ETH anywhere within the Word of God, or at least in the King James Version, it means a continual doing of something. So, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth continually comes out of the mouth of God. So, if the bread is the Word of God, the frequency in which you receive the bread is as long as God is allowing the bread to proceed out of His mouth, the Word of God to proceed out of His mouth, which means means that for you and I, while we're on the journey to get where the Holy Ghost has called us to, there is going to be a consistent word of God that is going to be in our lives if we allow it to be. Now, introduce faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith deals with our natural. We do not see it. We don't see the thing coming into fruition in the natural. It is not already here yet. So, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, we don't see it, but we have faith that we are going to have it. And hope maketh not ashamed. So, we have hope in what we are going to get right now. The Word of God is continually proceeding out of the mouth of God, which means that we can continually feast upon the bread as we progress towards our goal. The Word of God being fulfilled in our natural lives. Ultimately, the time where you go to the missions field, you preach, start the company, whatever. So how do we continually feast upon the bread? Because when the Holy Ghost first spoke it to you, you had all this strength that it was going to come to pass, right? Then tomorrow came. Then the next day came. Then the next day came and 50,000 days later, not 50,000, but 50 days later, you done almost forgot about the word. You just like, what in the world? And you haven't seen it come to pass yet. Your pastor has to give you the mic to give a little five minute preaching deal before service. He hasn't done that yet. So, God, where's the word? You know where the word's at? A lot of times we think of the Bible in this scripture context, the scripture I'm about to quote to you guys, but every word that God gives is a word from God, right? Whether it's in the 21st century, at a camp meeting, conference, whatever, or if it's way back then in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. Wherever it's at, it's still a word from God. And so David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, if you want to get even further, we can elaborate on the sinning against God. Because if you think about it, the children of Israel sinned against God when they were not seeing the vision, ultimately, Jordan, coming to pass. And so, thy word, the bread, have I hid where? In my heart, that I might not sin against you. So now it is in our heart. David hid the word of God that God gave him into his heart, right? So with it hiding in his heart, he can continually feast upon it and it be rejuvenated every time he brought it back up. Every time he thought about the word of God, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, continually coming out of the mouth of God, continually would feed David's soul and would feed our souls because it's the word of God coming to us that is continually coming out of the mouth of God that we allow, here's the make or break, if we allow it to feed us, allow it to be hid in our hearts where we can bring it back up and it be replenished inside of our hearts. Because when the bread comes up for us to eat, God's bringing it back down to our hearts, right? And so wherever the hell my heart that I'm not sinning against you, and it's proceeding out of the mouth of God. So we're om, nom 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 all over this bread, right? Which is the word of God. And so, young man, and so, young lady, while you're on your way to the will of God for your life, you got to purposefully choose to feast upon the word of God that he has already given you concerning his promises. And that is what we call faith. That is what we call recalling the promises of God. That's what we call dwelling upon what we are called to do. That's that's what we call vision. Without vision, the people perish. Without food, you're gonna die. <laughs> oh my word, my mind's reeling. And man shall not live by food alone, bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So that word of God is the bread that we eat upon, that feeds our souls. And if we don't have that word of God bread, what happens to our faith? What happens to our hope? It perishes. 
And if our hope perishes, if our faith perishes, we perish. Just think of every hopeless situation, every hopeless person. I can guarantee you 100% of the suicides that have been committed were because people lost hope. And science backs that, stats backs that, whatever. So if we lose hope, we perish. Now, without a vision, the people perish. So now the word of God becomes your vision because without the word of God, you will perish. You see what I'm saying? So, young apostolic, do not, absolutely do not, set down the word of God that you have gotten for anything. Because if you want to see it fulfilled, knowing, understanding, grabbing hold of, keeping, maintaining, investing into continually holding the word of God that you have received is what is going to sustain you, is what is going to be your vision, is what is going to be the thing that ultimately gets you to where you are going. And so Yappa fam, the journey's long, so take a bread, and not just a bread, but every single day, take the bread of life, take the word of God, which is an expression of God himself, take that. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So hold on to that promise that he's given you. Know that it's going to come to pass, but it's just not going to come past in your timing. It may come to pass in, oh, his timing. Hate to burst your bubble, but I hope I've given you guys something that will be strength to you along the way. You're going to preach the messages. You're going to preach the sermons where thousands of people get the Holy Ghost. You're going to see the miracles. You're going to see the signs. You're going to see the wonders. You're going to be that missionary. You're going to be that pastor's wife. You're going to be that evangelist that the Holy Ghost has given you the vision for you you to be. You're going to be that. Don't worry about it. Don't don't doubt it. It's going to happen. It has already happened like we talked about already. God already seen it. He, when he spoke it to you, he, he, it, it's there. It's going to happen. But along the natural journey of life, of time and working up to that, take the word of God that he gave you and hold on to it with all your might. Hide it in your heart. Every single day is coming from God. It's proceeding out of his mouth. It's continually there for you. Choose. Make the conscious decision Decision. And I don't know why I said conscious like that. I sound like Doris Rathbone. Make the conscious decision to receive the word of God to you and have faith that that which he has said is going to come to pass. Yappa fam, I love you guys. Be yapostolic. Above all, above all, be apostolic. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's TOTD. Woo! Man, Holy Ghost, thank you, Jesus. Good stuff.